Hey guys, it's Ewan with AirZoo. This is the North American B-25 Mitchell, one of the most visually stunning aircraft in our collection. The B-25 was an incredibly versatile aircraft during World War II, seen service in every theater during the conflict. Over 10,000 B-25s were built and they were used in a number of roles. As a medium bomber, the B-25 struck Tokyo in the famous Doolittle Raid in the Southwest Pacific, B-25s were modified and used on strafing missions. Some were even outfitted with a massive M4 cannon found traditionally on tanks. Earlier this summer, the Air Zoo was lucky enough to be visited by a flying B-25, the Yankee Air Museum's Rosie's Reply. And I was lucky enough to hitch a ride and see what it was like flying on one of these legendary warbirds. Check it out. <laughs> Before we took off, I was allowed a little snoop inside the aircraft. Now if you enter through the front hatch, you kind of directly come onto the flight deck. The pilots naturally sit here, and behind them was where the radio operator or navigator would be seated. Oh, I'm sweaty. That's a little bit too much information, but crew comfort was not the priority. So this gap here is how you travel between the front and the rear of the plane during flight. But don't worry, we'll show it in use later on in this video. In the rear of the aircraft, you might be surprised by how bare it is. The column in the center is part of the Bendix turret that housed two 50 caliber machine guns. And the very rear of the aircraft could also house additional tail guns. This one, however, just has a clear plastic blister. Throughout the various models of B-25, turrets were added and removed at various sections of the aircraft. Some were added to the side, some were added on top, some were added on the bottom, some added to the back. And, uh, just the yellow handle. Oh, okay. Nope, nothing red. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just back here. Yep. Up on there. <laughs> now, during takeoff, I was lucky enough to be seated in the navigator seat. And you'll see that I'm wearing ear defenders because the B 25 is loud. I'm not joking, even with just two engines, the B-25 seems or seemed much louder than the four-engine B-17 and even the B-29. Okay, so how do you get to the best seat in the house, the bombardier's position? Well, to do this, there's a little bit of maneuvering to do. You've got to lay on your back and slide underneath the flight deck. But trust me, it's worth it. Check out those views. It's from this position that the bombardier would be based. Now, they would typically use a Norden bomb site, so the bombardier could aim and release the B-25's explosive payload. However, the site was changed out during the famous Google raid. And okay, I'll include this clip, but here's me getting all excited about bombing my house.
As you can see, navigation throughout the aircraft is a little tight. After all, this is a warbird, not a commercial jet airliner. Now to move to the aft section, you have to navigate over the bomb bay, which involves sliding through this little gap. Just like reaching the bombardier's position, it involves a little bit of, let's just say, graceful maneuvering. Now as you can see in flight and with people, the rear section is difficult to maneuver around. In this version, there's only the turrets on the top, no turrets in the back or on the side, but different versions would have different armament layouts. And we'll just finish this quick tour of the B-25 with this wonderful shot of us landing. Uh, it was a fantastic experience, a fantastic trip. And I can't thank the Yankee Air Museum enough for letting us uh, film and letting us be part of that experience. Make sure you do check them out next time they fly into the air zoo.